Welcome to this video on rate concentration plots and the objective of this is that afterwards you're going to be able to construct a rate concentration plot from a concentration time plot, a typical type that are obtained uh, in continuous monitoring of reaction rates experiments and a key word is a tangent, we'll see one of those in a moment. So remember the overall goal, we want to try and understand reaction mechanisms um, and in order to do that we need reaction orders which were these small powers here uh, that determine how much the rate depends on the concentration of the individual reactants that are present. We remember we need to find these experimentally and so we need a method to determine these and the way this uh, method works of a rate concentration plot is just to recognize that the rate of reaction here is proportional to some concentrations raised to the pa different powers so if we were to plot say the concentration of A uh, on the x-axis and the rate on the y-axis uh, then we'd effectively obtain a plot with a particular shape depending on what this power was so for example if we're expecting that uh, the power is uh, 1 in there we're going to get a straight line uh, if it's a 2 we're going to get a curve if it's 0 we're going to get something else and more on that in a subsequent video but that's the basic idea we're going to plot the concentration of one of the reactants against the rate of the reaction um, and interestingly some of you might be thinking well what about the concentration of the other reactant well yes that will be varying as well and so often for these studies what's done is that the concentration of the other reactant is used in a vast excess so that effectively its concentration remains constant throughout the experiment anyway that's a fine point let's go on to how we do this so we start with a concentration time plot um, and then what we need to try and do here is draw some tangents so here's the first tangent I've just put onto the curve there so at this concentration here which is a concentration of uh, 0.6 moles per decimeter cubed then we can calculate the gradient of this tangent so this is around about 0.9 that's about 30 uh, and so at uh, concentration equals uh, 0.6 uh, the rate is change in concentration over change in time negative sign to make sure it's positive and so in this case we've effectively got a change in concentration of 0.9 and a time change of 30 seconds and so what we've got here is a rate of 0.03 uh, in this particular case. So that's how you do it with just one tangent but what we need to do is build up many tangents drawn to the graph at different concentrations so this tangent here drawn at 0.6 there are other tangents drawn at different concentrations and we can make up a little table so you can have concentration that this is where the tangent touches tangent touches the curve and the rate of reaction at that point and we can use calculate the gradient of those tangents and fill in concentration and rate here and so I've done that in this graph here these are the concentrations that I chose usually about six concentrations that you need um, you a good idea is to start plotting this whilst you're building this up. Obviously if you end up with a straight line, just four points would be fine, but if it's a curve, five, six, seven points definitely in order to define its shape well. So I've left the units off here just for clarity. Um, and just another sort of nuance to note here um, is that because the rate tends to be quite small in these particular units that we're using, it's often convenient uh, just to multiply these numbers by a convenient value just so that we're not getting uh, huge uh, so very small numbers that we're having to write here so when I plot this I'm actually going to plot a hundred times the rate so if I do a hundred times that then it's going to be five so this is going to become five so the highest number I need on here is five and then if I start with a rate of zero approximately yeah, like this four so that's a hundred times the rate that I'm going to be plotting so this one here will be 0.5 one, two, three, four, etc. So 
Remember the form of the rate equation, so rate is going to be rate constant, which people often forget, uh, multiplied by the concentration of A raised to the power little a. And so what we need to do when we're plotting a graph is this needs to be on the horizontal axis and this needs to be on the vertical axis. So let's carry on and do that. So this is concentration of reactant A and sometimes given this symbol here, the concentration of reactant A, this is the rate of the reaction. So concentration of A is ranging here from uh, started at zero, uh, it's going up to one at the end, so going up in 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 on the graph. And <coughs> when we're going ahead to plot this, uh, we'll just plot the points on, so 0 0.1 uh, it goes to 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.2 we were up at 1, 0 0.4 at 2, 0 0.6 we're up at 3, 0 0.8 we're up at 4, and 1 was up at 5. You can see here what these are doing is forming a very nice straight line through here. Um, and one thing just to notice with all of these rate concentration plots is whether the origin should be on the plot. Now let's think about whether that's the case. So the origin corresponds to a concentration of zero. And if we look at this equation, if we've got a zero as the concentration, then yes, we would expect the rate to be zero. So and it makes sense just from a physical point of view. If there are no reactants present, you're not going to get a reaction. So remember that whilst it isn't going to be a piece of data you obtain, the origin here should be on the line. And so we've got a directly proportional relationship here. We just draw a best fit line through it and that's our rate concentration plot.